In this video, I will show you how to create five different styles of clickable buttons in WordPress by using our drag and drop WordPress website builder called SeedProd. Please visit SeedProd.com or click the link in the description below to join over 1 million professionals who use SeedProd to create custom WordPress themes and page layouts without ever writing a single line of code. Let's get started. So here I just have a default installation of WordPress and I have SeedProd installed. This is the pro version. If you need help installing SeedProd, I'll leave a link in the description to the installation video that will help you run through through that step. Next, I'm on the landing pages here and we'll go ahead and create a new landing page just as a test page to work with our buttons. I'll select the blank template here and I'll click this and I'll just name this buttons and we'll save and start editing the page. Here we can see the seed prod page builder and these are all our blocks on the left hand side that we can drag into our page to build our website and our pages. And I just want one row, so I'll choose the layout of one column and one row here. And I'll take my button and I'll just drag that out into the middle of the page here. Now, before we select the button, let's go ahead to the bottom left-hand corner here. I'm gonna go to background. Now, I'm not sure yet, but I might add some drop shadow on here. And I kind of want to use a darker gray background. You don't have to use this if you don't wish. I just think it looks a little nicer. Now, let's go ahead and select our button block. That's the orange part, not the blue. That's the row. We actually want the orange. So let's hit the block settings here. And on the left-hand side, we have our button text. We can update this to maybe say button one and we have subtext here if you want to add any subtext underneath there i'm going to leave that blank and then the link that this is going to wherever you want to set that and there's a couple options here to open a new window and add no follow here we can align to the left middle right or the full width i'm just going to leave this to the center and then we have different sizes here of the buttons as well i'm just going to leave this at the large size we also have icons here at the bottom when you can add an icon before the text or after the text. Next, let's come to the templates here. Now these are pre-made styles that you can just click on and it'll update your button and you can just go ahead and use that and maybe that's all you want. For me, I'm gonna come under the advanced tab here. This is the third tab and here we'll see styles at the top. We can minimize this and we have spacing attributes and device visibility as well. In this video, I'm just gonna look at the styles here for today and under topography, we can click here to edit to open a new pan and this will change our font family if we want to edit that so for example if i want impact you can see that that was updated if you want another font you can select whichever one you want to use there's plenty of here to choose from i'm just going to select the default that's set in our global css we also have the font size so maybe i'll make that a little bit smaller or bigger we have line height letter spacing some default styles such as bold and italicize etc more alignment and letter casing if you want to make it all caps or all small letter casing you can do that let's go ahead and close this under here i have button styles so this is flat 2d vintage ghost and you can't really see these too well unless you have a different color because some of them add shading and gradients but using black you can't really see the effect too much in this video i wanted to look at custom creating your own custom buttons that'll stand out and pop off the page let's go ahead and select custom and here you'll notice right away we have a normal state and a hover state so right now normal is when nothing is happening to your button and of course hover is when you hover over the button now we can't see anything because we don't have anything set yet so to get started we have two options we have a solid background style color or a gradient if we want to use that i'm just going to select a solid background color so we'll click right here and i'll go with something like blue and this is a nice looking blue so we'll keep that there the button text color i'm just going to leave that alone for now and if we hover over you can see that it's black as the hover that was the default let's click on hover here and we'll update this color and we'll just select that same blue color but i'm going to make this actually a little bit darker let's see what that looks like that looks good to me maybe even a little touch darker right there I like that. So next, let's make sure that we come back under the normal state because anything under the hover state, you won't see unless you hover over. So let's go back to normal and we'll come down and we have the button text color we'll leave alone. We have the vertical padding. So that's the spacing on the button on the top and bottom of the text. And we have the horizontal padding. So that's on the left and right. So for example, if I bring this all the way up to 100, you can see that there's 100 pixels of space or 50 on each side. And let's just return this back down to 20. We also have the border radius. This is how much curvature is on your four corners. So right now you can see there's a little bit that's set to four. If I put this up, you can see that you get that pill button effect. And if we took it all the way down, you get that strong, sharp edge. And when you take it down to zero, you have that sharp 90 degree edge here. We also have the button border width. Right now, there's no border on this whatsoever. Let's go ahead and set this to maybe two. You can't see that yet because we haven't set a button border color. So let's go ahead and click here. I'm going to select that dark color that we set as our hover. So when I hover over, you can see that that matches our border that we set. That's good. I'm actually going to leave that as our first example. 
So if you just like that button nice and simple, you can leave it as is. And I'm just going to duplicate this and we'll select it. And let's go to content. We'll call this button two. come back under advanced. And for this one, I want to use a little bit of a drop shadow. If we come down and scroll, we can see that this is the button border color. This is where we left off. And underneath that, we have the text shadow. So right now, you, there's no shadow on the text whatsoever. It's just the white text. But if I add maybe a hairline, if you look closely, there's a little bit of a black drop shadow on that text. You can compare it to the button above it. Of course, you can add more if you wish. So maybe medium or extra large. The bigger you get, it's going to be harder to see because it's spread out. I'm going to put this maybe at just leave it at hairline for now. Now, if we come down, we also have shadow. So you can select hairline, small, medium, large, extra large, or two times large. I'm actually, again, going to select custom, and this will open up this new panel for us. Now, you can set the color to whatever you wish. So let's just, for example, select a random color. Just black is fine, just so I can show this. And you're actually going to see a little bit of a drop shadow around the whole button. That's because we have a blur set here by default to three. If I take that off, you'll see that there's nothing happening. If I slowly push this up, you'll see that that black which is behind our button is blurred out and it expands out so you could actually use this for a way to create some unique background colors or behind different sections if you like because you have full control over the positioning from your horizontal and vertical so for example i could move this over here or up top and you kind of have this floating big dot here now if you take this blur it says 100 but i could actually set this to say 200 if you wish you can just type in the button and now i have this big red cloud here behind it so you could use that as some type of lighting effect if you wish i'm not going to do that so let's just go ahead and reset everything back here so we'll do zero zero and we'll put this at zero as well and for my color i'm going to set that to the same dark blue that we use for everything else here besides the light blue and i'm just going to off center this a bit so let's come off to the left a bit and there you go you could actually just use that as a button it looks like it has a little side there to it that's a little bit thicker and i think that looks actually pretty nice let's go maybe minus 10 and on the vertical we'll do the same thing we'll go maybe plus 10 so that goes down to the bottom that actually looks too much to me i just kind of want it out just a little bit something like that so it looks like it's a, a really sharp shadow behind it and it's popping off the page and there you go i actually like that style just how it is there's no real blur to it it's very strong but it pops off to me let's go ahead and duplicate this and we'll do a third button here let's go back to the content and i'll call this one button three let's come back to the advanced tab here and we'll scroll down back to where we were with the shadow let's come back to the shadow section with the custom and we'll play with this again to create a new type of button here now instead of having the shadow on the outside and again if you wanted that blurry you could go with the classic look with the blur and then bring it in a little bit and this is how you'd kind of work your drop shadow if that's what you're looking for a lot of people use the gray so you can see that that has that effect there and you can just adjust it however you want now it looks like it's kind of hovering off the page and i think that looks great as well but let's try something new i'm going to select the color go back to that dark blue that we had and we'll take the blur off and instead of using the outline positioning here let's actually switch this to an inset and now that's on the inset of our button so instead of being on the outside, you can see that that was applied inside. Let's go ahead and just set this to maybe one. And our spread, we actually want to put this up. Let's go, we could do maybe one or two. I'll just do one. And we're going to change our color to white. Now this actually looks like, instead of a drop shadow, it looks like a second border. So you can actually add these cool effects with your buttons that have a double border effect. So here when I hover up, you can see that white is still popping off the edges, which I think gives it a nice kind of classic great look and there you go i would just leave that like that i think that looks really good let's go ahead and duplicate this and i'll do a button four here and i'll come under the advanced tab again and i'll come all the way down and this time i actually want to change our button border color let's go ahead and maybe change this to white and we'll just bring this down to maybe one just so it's a little bit of a highlight there instead of a full thick border and we'll come down maybe under the color for our inset here the the drop shadow that's on the inside of our button just like this white piece let's go ahead and change this back to that dark color now instead of using just the sharp spread of one let's go ahead and actually blur this out let's put this up a bit maybe two or three but we'll use the blur and now that it's on the inset that blur actually goes on the inside right so if we change this to outline you can see how that goes on the outside if we come back on inset we can actually create this cool gradient effect. Now we could use a radial gradient on our color up here if we wanted to do this, but I actually find this easier to do. You have better control over it. So I can change the blur. So if I just want a little bit on the edge, you could do none if you want, but you could just do a lot or a little and you can find where you like the look of that. Now, of course you have the hover 
as well. And I think that looks really great. If you wish, you could put a gradient effect on your hover here as well, if you like. I'm just going to leave that alone how it is. And I'm leaving the white border on the outside. This is a light highlight, just so it brings the colors out a little bit more. Let's go ahead and I'll do one more. Let's select the block settings here and we'll call this button five. And we'll come back to advanced. And this one, I'm actually gonna create a ghost button. So let's come back down and we want the background color to be hidden until we hover over it. So we could come back to our normal state for our solid color, background color, and click the color. And here instead, we could select the that white light gray background but what we actually want is to have no background whatsoever so instead of having a color here let's actually take this little control and we'll put the opacity all the way down so this will use the background behind it instead now let's come on down to the bottom let's go ahead and set our button border color so i'll set this to that blue that we've been using and i'll put this to a two now, I'm not going to use a shadow here at all. Let's just put that to none. And let's come back up and edit the text color here. So right here, we have button text color. I'll click this. And I'm going to select the same color. So for these ghost style buttons, usually it's the same solid color for everything. You don't have to, but that's generally what they look like. And I see we still have a text shadow here. I'm going to take that off just so we can see the text. Great. Now, I think that looks pretty good. But on the hover, I'm actually going to change that just to be the same blue that light blue that looks good and then on the hover state for the text color we'll change that to white and there you go you have that ghost style button that a lot of websites use and if you come back to content we could actually come back down to after text and we'll choose an icon here and i'll just type in arrow and let's go for the right side and now you have an icon there that you can hover over let's go ahead and save this and preview there we go we can see all of our different buttons that we created quite easily with the custom settings in seed prod that makes it extremely easy to customize websites when you're building them now that you know how to create wordpress buttons in seconds with seed prod maybe you would like to check out this video Video on how to create beautiful parallax backgrounds in WordPress, which will help take your web design skills to the next level. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.